Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Skyrim Zimik. Here are top stories we're tracking for you on Wednesday, the 8th of July. India reports 22,752 new coronavirus cases. Recovery rate rises to 61.5%. Pakistan claims Kulbushan Jadav refused to file review petition. And schools partially reopen in Sri Lanka as COVID-19 restrictions ease. And now for all the details. India on Wednesday reported a spike of 22,752 COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours, taking the country's coronavirus tally to 742,417. Though the virus cases across the country continue to rise, total recovery rate now stands at 61.5%. India reported a spike of 22,752 COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours, taking the country's cases tally to 742,417 on Wednesday. Out of the total cases, 456,830 patients have been cured or discharged from the disease, while one patient has been migrated. Amid the rise in virus cases, Indian government has said the number of coronavirus infections and fatalities per million population in the country are among the lowest in the world. The country's recovery rate now stands at 61.5%. Meanwhile, hotels and other entities providing accommodation services outside containment zones in Mumbai city of India's worst hit Maharashtra province resumed operations at 33% of their capacity after government orders. See, the anxiety levels obviously are understandably there. It is our job to explain to them that when they enter into the environment of the hotel and our commitment towards Reassure, which is an ITC hotel's commitment to health, hygiene and safety, uh, it is our job to convince them that it is safe. With tourism sector facing an unprecedented slump due to coronavirus closure, Local administration in India's Jammu and Kashmir also allowed reopening of parks and gardens nearly after three months. Visitors have been asked to take precautionary measures and follow guidelines seriously. Jammu and Kashmir, as of Wednesday, reported 3,389 active cases of COVID-19. An elderly woman was killed and another injured as Pakistan's resorted to ceasefire violation along the border in India's Jammu and Kashmir in the wee hours of Wednesday. Officials said Pakistani troops targeted forwards post and civilian areas in Poonch and Rajori districts of Jammu and Kashmir. The injured were immediately rushed to hospital. The deceased who succumbed to injuries was identified as 60-year-old Reshma B. Last month, five Indian soldiers succumbed to the injuries along the effect of border, line of control in Punch and Rajori sectors in Pakistani shelling. Since January this year, Pakistan has violated ceasefire along the international border in Jammu and Kashmir over 2,400 times. Pakistan on Wednesday claimed that Indian national Gulbushan Jadav, who is in its custody for alleged espionage, has refused to file a review petition for reconsideration of his death sentence and conviction and instead wants to go ahead with mercy plea. Pakistan has claimed that Indian national Kulbhushan Jadav, who is in its custody for alleged espionage, has refused to file a review petition for reconsideration of his sentence and conviction and instead wants to go ahead with mercy plea. Pakistan's additional Attorney General Ahmed Irfan in a press conference on Wednesday claimed that on June 17, 2020, Jadav was invited to file a petition for review and reconsideration of his sentence and conviction, which he refused. The official added that Kulbushan Jadav insisted on the mercy petition he filed in 2017. 
Jadav was sentenced to death by a Pakistani military court on charges of espionage and terrorism in April 2017. These are all bundle of lies. Pakistan is going against the global laws and uh, this point the ICJ should note and ICJ should take strong steps against Pakistan. Pakistan had in September 2019 granted consular access to Jadav after a prolonged legal battle with India in the International Court of Justice. In its verdict on July 17, 2019, the World Court had ordered Pakistan to undertake an effective review of the conviction and sentence of Jadav. India denies the allegations against Jadav and maintains that he was kidnapped by Pakistani operatives from Iran, where he had business interests. Moving on, locals in Pakistan-administered Kashmir have raised concern over neglect by Islamabad amid coronavirus pandemic and the indifference towards the development of illegally occupied region. Residents of Pakistan-administered Kashmir are facing one of the worst crises due to coronavirus pandemic. Locals have blamed their suffering due to neglect by Pakistan as hundreds have lost their jobs across sectors as lockdown halted businesses. They said that now elections are going to be held in the illegally occupied region wherein politicians will make false claims of development. However, in reality, nothing has been done on ground. A local said Pakistan and the Stooch government in the region has failed to address the public's concerns and put them on pity of circumstances over the years. While Pakistan claims to champion the Kashmiri cause on the World Forum, Pakistan-administered Kashmir remains one of the most neglected and backward regions under its rule. Top U.S. General Frank McKenzie has said he is not convinced that any Russian bounties resulted in the deaths of U.S. troops in Afghanistan, even as he acknowledged his concerns about Russian intentions toward the United States. Officials say the United States acquired intelligence suggesting that Russia may have paid bounties to Taliban-affiliated militants to kill U.S.-led coalition forces in Afghanistan, but stressed that intelligence was not conclusive. Commander of U.S. Central Command Marine General Frank McKenzie on Tuesday said he was not convinced that any Russian bounties resulted in the deaths of U.S. troops in Afghanistan, even as he acknowledged his concerns about Russian intentions towards the United States. According to a transcript released by U.S. Central Command talking over whether Russian payments led to the U.S. deaths, Frank McKenzie said, While I am very familiar with this material and I am a theater commander, and I have had an opportunity to look at it. I found it very worrisome. I just didn't find that there was a causative link there. U.S. officials say the United States acquired the intelligence suggesting that Russia may have paid bounties to Taliban-affiliated militants to kill U.S.-led coalition forces in Afghanistan, but stress that intelligence was not conclusive. The U.S. invaded Afghanistan in 2001 and the death toll of American service members has surpassed 2,400 in the longest war in Washington's history. The U.S. military had previously accused Russia of possibly providing support, including weapons, to elements of the Taliban in Afghanistan. Moscow denies the allegations. As Chinese ambassador to Nepal has held a number of meetings with top political leaders of Nepal in recent times, a group of demonstrators on Tuesday held a protest in front of Chinese mission in Nepal, claiming it its interference in the Himalayan nation's political issues. Though Nepal and China called their meeting as just for maintaining a good relationship, it is speculated that Beijing might be intending to expand its political doctrine to Nepal. Nepalese people held a demonstration in front of the Chinese embassy on Tuesday 
to protest against Chinese ambassador Ho Yankee's interference in the political matters of Nepal. As rift inside ruling Nepal Communist Party has intensified, the Chinese ambassador has been holding meetings with leaders of the ruling party as well as the country's president Vidya Devi Bhandari. Though Nepal and China call their meetings as just for maintaining a good relationship, it is speculated that Beijing might be intending to expand its political doctrine to Nepal. Meanwhile, the Standing Committee meeting of Nepal Communist Party aimed at resolving the ongoing rift between both party chairs, Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli and Pushp Kamal Dehil, was yet again postponed until Friday. The party meeting commenced first on June 25th to discuss issues like boundary dispute with India, government's failure to handle COVID-19, increasing cases of corruption in different sectors and other issues related to party unity. The Hill has been demanding that Oli resign both as party chair and prime minister while the letter has refused. Sri Lanka has reopened its schools in a phased manner from this week after keeping them closed for over three months due to coronavirus lockdown. The island nation is now witnessing a decrease in new virus cases with over 90% recovery rate. Schools across Sri Lanka were reopened this week after being shut for nearly three months as the island nation continues to ease COVID-19 restrictions in phases. According to the Education Ministry, schools have reopened for Grade 13, the final year of secondary schools, and Grades 11 and 5, leading to nearly 800,000 students returning back to school across the country. Strict health guidelines are being followed as students are subjected to temperature checks, frequent washing of hands and wearing face masks. Chairs and desks are kept one meter apart in each classroom and students have been told to speak to each other from a distance. In the next phase starting later in July, students of grades 12 and 10 will also return to schools. The students of grade 3 to 9 would return in the followed phase. The final phase would be on August 10 when grades 1 and 2 would return according to officials. Sri Lanka has till date reported 2,078 positive COVID-19 patients but has seen an over 90% recovery rate with 1,955 patients out of the total detected being successfully treated and discharged. According to Wordometer, a website tracking global COVID-19 figures, there are only 112 active patients of the novel coronavirus in Sri Lanka now. Authorities in India's capital's largest COVID-19 hospital have set up video calling facility to help connect family members with coronavirus patients who are admitted. Relatives have expressed that they feel much relieved after the brief video calls. Authorities in New Delhi's largest COVID-19 hospital have set up video calling facility via iPads to help connect family members with coronavirus patients admitted inside the hospital, streamlining pleas for better communication. A regular stream of family members can be seen trickling into the help center set up by the authorities at Lok Nayak J. Prakash Narayan or LNJP Hospital in New Delhi to speak with the admitted loved ones. For months, relatives had been complaining that they are absolutely clueless about the health and well-being of their family members once they are admitted inside the COVID-19 hospital. But the relatives have expressed they feel much relieved after the brief video calls. India has the world's third biggest outbreak of the COVID-19 with over 742,000 confirmed cases and more than 20,600 deaths and some of its largest cities are still reeling from rising infections.
That's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline. And follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.